Welcome to the number 7 online Comfort 15 training presentation. This presentation will cover what the Comfort 15 lens is, why should we fit it, who the Comfort 15 is for and how do we fit the Comfort 15 lens. Scleral contact lenses were first manufactured in the late 19th century and were originally made from glass. They did have their uses, but obviously huge limitations, mainly due to the lack of oxygen reaching the cornea. Next came the advent of PMMA lenses. They gradually became smaller, and then we developed RGP lens materials. Next advent was soft contact lenses, and scleral lenses fell by the wayside. They were seen as quite niche lenses, only fit by specialists. In the last five to ten years, there's been a huge resurgence in the popularity of scleral lenses. This is for many reasons, but mainly due to the increase in knowledge about eye shape, thanks to better technology, better manufacturing methods, and simplified fitting processes. So why are practitioners fitting scleral lenses again? Main reasons are the fantastic vision that they provide, RGP lens optics, with also phenomenal comfort. There's also no need to fit the irregular corneal shape. Scleral lenses vault the cornea entirely and rest entirely on the sclera, which is usually much more regular in shape. Scleral lenses do have their limitations, of course. Handling can be difficult for some. The size of a mini scleral is typically 16 to 18 millimeters in diameter. And this can be a challenge for both practitioner and patient, particularly with patients with a small palpebral aperture or a very strong blink reflex. They can be complicated to fit and some lenses do have a large range of parameters that can be adjusted to attain a perfect fit, but it would be nice to have a more simple option. The cost can be prohibitive with mini scleral lenses for some patients. So what is the Comfort 15? The Comfort 15 is a mini scleral lens which is just 15 millimeters in diameter. It only has two fitting parameters, the sagittal depth of the lens and the edge profile. It's a low cost, simple alternative to more complex design. So who is the Comfort 15 lens for? The main use in your practice will probably be for irregular cornea patients, such as those with keratoconus, lucid marginal degeneration, post-graft, post-lasic and ectatic eyes. However, they may also be useful for RGP lens wearers looking for better comfort, soft lens wearers needing better vision, patients with mild to moderate ocular surface disease and dry eye, patients with high astigmatism who need better stability and better vision, and also patients who need to wear their lenses in dusty environments. And for practitioners, those who are looking to start fitting irregular corneas but not quite sure where to start, those already fitting corneal lenses for irregular corneas and looking to start fitting a scleral lens but wanting to start with something more straightforward, and those perhaps who are already fitting scleral lenses but looking for a lower cost alternative to existing design. And also anyone who struggled with handling larger scleral lenses. The Comfort 15 is just 15 millimeters diameter, making it very easy to handle. Now we move on to how to fit the Comfort 15 lens. The Comfort 15 comes in a fitting set consisting of 13 lenses with sagittal depths ranging between 3500 and 5000 microns in 125 micron steps. The aim of the fit is to find a lens which exceeds the sagittal depth of the cornea by around 100 to 150 microns. Any less than this, the lens may settle back to touch and any more you end up with excessive clearance and potentially poorer vision. You don't need a topographer because the corneal profile is not terribly important and the lens is assessed with fluorescein. So when you're selecting your first trial lens, you select the lens based on the eye condition. So for very flat, uh, K readings or a very shallow anterior chamber, perhaps post LASIK or a flat graft, 
you'd select the low sag end of the chart, so lens one or two. For normal eyes, early keratoconus and early pellucid, you'd select lens four or five. For moderate keratoconus, moderate pellucid or a slightly more protruding graft, select lens seven or eight. And for severe keratoconus, severe pellucid, very protruding grafts or very ectatic eyes, you select a high sag lens, maybe between 11 and 12. Insertion. Lenses must always be inserted full to the brim with saline. Without this, you will end up with bubbles behind the lens, which will obstruct the view and create a poor fit. Fluorescein must be added to the bowl of the lens prior to insertion. If you insert the fluorescein after the lens is inserted, it won't get behind the lens and you will not be able to assess the fit properly. The patient should be bent forward at the waist with their nose pointing towards the floor and their chin tucked in so that their face is completely parallel with the floor. The lens can either be supported on a tripod of three fingers or on a DMV lens inserter. These images show a lens balanced on three fingers and filled with saline and fluorescein and a lens balanced on a DMV lens inserter. The simplest way to remove the lens is with an RGP lens sucker. Place it towards the top of the lens, asking the patient to look down and lever the lens away from the eye rather than pulling from the middle. The alternative to using a lens sucker is using the classic tiddlywink technique to flick the lens out using the lids as per the diagram. So once you have the lens in place, you need to assess the sag. This is firstly done using a blue light and a rattan filter on your slit lamp. You are looking for a lens that completely clears the cornea, but not excessively. So you don't want any bearing of the lens on the cornea and you don't want excessive clearance over say 200 microns. Leave the lens in place once you have a lens that you like the look of and then reassess the sag after 60 minutes of settling time. Next, you need to assess the limbal clearance. This should be done with a blue light on your slit lamp. Either use a diffused beam or ensure that you have a light source coming from the side that you are assessing. If you shine the light source at the nasal side and try to assess the temporal area, it will appear to be in shadow and may appear to be touching when in fact it's not. The aim is 360 degree clearance over the limbus with no touch in any quadrant. We can see in this photo that this lens has excessive bearing on the limbus and would need to be alleviated by adjusting the fit accordingly. Next we assess the lens edge. After you've allowed the lens to settle for 60 minutes, the best way of assessing the edge is to push the sclera just below the edge of the lens as seen in the photograph. If the lens edge flares away very easily, it may be too flat. If it takes significant push to get any flaring away of the lens, the edge is too tight or the lens may be too deep. If the patient is reporting any discomfort, that's a good sign that the lens is probably too flat. However, if they report that it feels like it's pinching or touching very hard underneath the top lid, that's a good sign that the edge might be a little bit too tight. You may also see blanching of the blood vessels at the periphery. A good fit will show low vaulting of the cornea by around 100 to 150 microns, no edge lift, no scleral impingement, mid peripheral clearance and good limbal clearance. So the lens should clear entirely over the whole cornea and touch down gently on the sclera with no standoff and no impingement. A shallow or a flat fit will show central bearing potentially edge lift and will usually be uncomfortable for the patient. To alleviate this, remove the lens and insert a lens with a higher sag, i.e. a deeper lens. You may see something like this on the eye. Both of these examples show excessive standoff inferiorly. A deep or steep fit will show excessive fluorescein pooling 
you may have a central bubble and you may see scleral impingement at the periphery. To alleviate this, remove the lens and insert a lens with a lower sagittal depth, i.e. a shallower lens. If the depth of the lens does appear to be correct but the edges appear tight, you can simply order a lens with a flatter edge option but maintain the sag. A deep or steep fit may appear like this. Excessive fluorescein pooling centrally and potentially blanching at the periphery. Once you see the ideal vault, next you need to assess the edge fit and adjust it accordingly if necessary. If the edges show impingement or scleral blanching under the lens, order the lens with a flatter edge option. If the edges are too loose, simply order the lens with a steeper edge option. It's extremely simplified. If you do see insufficient clearance at the limbus or mid-periphery, you can add around two and a half diopters of reverse curve to increase the limbal clearance. Though please remember to alter the power to compensate if you're doing this. After a corneal graft or refractive surgery, many corneas become flat in the centre, whilst the periphery and sclera retain their original normal shape. This shape, where the eye becomes steeper in the periphery and is flat centrally, is known as an oblate cornea and will often require reverse geometry lenses. Fitting this shaped cornea with a standard lens can result in a fit that has central pooling with heavy mid-peripheral touch. It is possible to modify the shape of a Comfort 15 lens to create a reverse geometry lens which will maintain the correct fitting relationship, i.e. flatter centrally and steeper peripherally. To fit a reverse geometry Comfort 15 lens, insert a trial lens until you find one which shows mid-peripheral bearing but the correct central sag. The amount of touch will help determine the amount of reverse curve that is necessary to alleviate that touch. In the first instance, we suggest you try five diopters of reverse curve, or if the mid-peripheral bearing is very heavy, try 10 diopters. The lens supplied by number seven will have a flattened central curve that should eliminate the mid-peripheral bearing. Please note that the power of the lens will be altered for you to compensate for the reverse curve. Comfort 15 lenses can be ordered using the fitting app supplied by number seven. This is a very simplified way of ordering the lenses and looks something like this. You have a right lens and a left lens you simply select from the drop-down box the fitted lens number, your over-refraction, and choose the material you wish to use. You can then select your diameter, which is set at 15 millimeters for this lens. You can make any changes to your edge curve by selecting standard, flatter, or steeper curves. You can alter your sagittal depth if required, and you can create a reverse curve by selecting the amount of reverse curve diopters you need for both lenses. Your lenses will then be designed by number seven and sent to you directly. The care systems for mini scleral lenses is slightly different from normal RGP lenses. RGP solutions are too viscous for use with Comfort 15. Soft lens solutions such as Ote Sensation are recommended instead because they're much runnier and easier to use. The use of an alcohol-based daily cleaner such as Ote Clean is recommended for patients who need the extra cleaning step. The lenses are plasma treated as standard, so please avoid abrasive cleaners as this will immediately remove the plasma coating and the lens may not wet as well. In summary, the Comfort 15 lens is a basic mini scleral lens which is very comfortable for your patients, provides them with fantastic vision and is easy to fit and a great starting point for anyone wishing to get into fitting specialist lenses or lenses for irregular corneas. They're a good problem solver 
and a good place to start before you move on to more complicated lenses. The Comfort 15 lens is manufactured from Optimum Extra as standard, which has a high decay of 100. The sag range is from 3500 to 5000 microns, with a set diameter of 15 millimeters. The power range is from plus 25 to minus 25 in 025 steps. It's recommended for daily wear only, and the replacement schedule is annually. Thank you for listening.